Brad, we've had some questions about Oracle Disk Manager. Are you able to explain a little bit about it? I'd be glad to. Great. So we're going to talk about ODM and cached ODM. So ODM stands for Oracle Disk Manager, and it's basically the way that Oracle likes to do I.O. Cached ODM is basically the same thing, but we're utilizing memory a little bit differently, and I'll get into that. So databases traditionally like to do things with raw devices because they like to do their own memory management and their own I.O. management. So for example, Oracle has its memory area called the SGA or System Global Area, and that's where it does all of its I.O. Uh, memory management the whole bit. Well, that's great, but raw devices are actually really hard to deal with. So we add to that by allowing the database to be in a file system. But we wanted to get past some problems with the file system, and so that's the whole idea of ODM. There's three key benefits. The first is it avoids double buffering. Now, what double buffering is, is if you look at a traditional file, right, the application requests some amount of I.O. We go out to disk, we pull in those pages, and then we put them in our buffer cache. Then we give it to the application. Right? Well, in Oracle's context, what that means is we pull it into memory, and then we give it over to them. Right? Well, that's double buffering, right? Because again, Oracle likes doing its own memory management. So the fact that we have it in memory here and then have to basically write it over to memory in Oracle's SGA, that's wasting memory as well as that's slowing down performance. So with the idea of ODM, what happens is we put the I.O. straight into Oracle's SGA. So there's a library that's our library that basically all the Oracle requests that come in go through that library and we know what to do with them and we put them straight in to their SGA. So that avoids double buffering. Another big benefit is we avoid kernel write locks. Traditionally what happens with a Unix file is when you open that file, Unix only allows one write, one lock on the write lock on that file at a time. Well, again, databases really like to do their own locking. Right? So instead of only being able to have one writer, a database really wants to have multiple writers and they want to do locking on their terms row-level locking, file-level locking, database-level locking, but really the context of row-level locking. So by using ODM, we bypass and we basically allow them, Oracle, to do the locking and most of it we bypass. Right? The third area is we allow kernel asynchronous I.O. Similar to the write locks, um, databases really like to have multiple readers, multiple writers simultaneously. Well, with normal file opens with uh, Unix, that can't happen. So with kernel asynchronous IRO, again, we get down to the kernel level, which is where we're at, and we allow it all to happen. So those are the key benefits of ODM. Now with cached ODM, the interesting thing is for certain workloads, traditionally read intensive workloads, what happens is we actually do take usage of our buffer cache. So if you think about it, Oracle's got some number of pages, you know, blocks in memory, and now they need to read another page. Well, there's no room in their memory, so they would have to basically swap out that page, read from disk, and bring another page in. So what we do, is we store those extra pages in our buffer cache and that allows, it's like it extends the Oracle SGA. All right, so what we're doing is we're really speeding up Oracle in some ways and we're making it easier to manage. Would that be a fair way of saying it? Yep. Fantastic. Well, Brad, thank you so much. We appreciate you explaining uh, Oracle Disk Manager.